Morning guys. Today we're going to be doing something more garage like. We're going to be putting some brakes on a 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee. These are going to be back brakes. On a lot of newer vehicles you'll find that the back brakes uh, wear up faster than the front brakes contrary to what you might be used to from years past. So eons ago your back brakes, or sorry your front brakes you'd replace those two or three times before you even touch the back brakes but newer vehicles not so. Uh, I believe that's because of the traction control system. They kind of blip the back brakes to prevent a nose dive. Um, not 100% sure on that. If one of you guys knows for sure, please feel free to correct me. Um, so this vehicle has two different style brake rotors for the, the 3.6 liter V6 4x2. Or actually maybe it doesn't. Anyway, there are two different style rear rotors for sure. There are vented rotors and solid rotors. I checked my vehicle and it has the solid rotors which are, look just like this one. If you have a vented rotor, you'll see uh, two brake braking surfaces separated by um, airspace, kind of, I don't know, it's kind of like a honeycomb, not really a honeycomb, but you'll see a, braking, a brake rotor here, brake rotor on the bottom, and you'll see a, uh, kind of an air gap in between them that's uh, held together with metal. Mo almost all front brake rotors are vented, so if you're not sure what you have, compare your back rotors to your front rotors. If your back rotors look like your front rotors, you have vented brakes, or vented rotors rather. If they look like this, these are solid rotors. So this whole kit was about maybe 150 bucks or so. Uh, you can pick it up on Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, this is a power stop kit. I've used them in the past with pretty good luck. Um, they have several different series of brake hardware you can buy. They have like kind of the OEM replacement, which is what these are. And they have some super fancy stuff. Um, so yeah, I've done lots of brake jobs before on many vehicles, but I've never done one on this one. So it uh, be a bit of a learning experience for both of us, but I'll show you how I typically do a brake job. And it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. You can save yourself a crap ton of money by doing this yourself. Just got to be careful though, because obviously it is brakes, it's safety. Um, so you just got to be pay attention to what you're doing. So without further ado, let's uh, get the vehicle situated. One thing I want to tell you about back brakes. So... The way a lot of vehicles work is the back brakes provide obviously stopping power, service brakes, they also supply the parking brake. So if you're going to be doing your back brakes, you have to be darn sure that your vehicle is on a level surface so it's not going to roll. Because as soon as you jack up those rear wheels, if you're not on a level surface, the thing's going to roll. It's going to go downhill. It's going to find gravity's going to take its course. So make sure that when you do back brakes, you got to chalk the front wheels and make sure you're on a level surface as much as possible. That's super important just for safety reasons. Another uh, safety tip. Do one side at a time. Don't jack up the whole rear end and take off both rear wheels. You can jack up one side, take off one rear wheel, do that. Kind of That'll kind of teach you how to do the process. Then you go and do the other side. Worst case, if you mess up, you can always uh, jack up the other side, take off the wheel and see how things look. Because obviously, they're going to be very similar on both sides. Alright, so let's get the vehicle in the garage. We'll jack up one side and show you what we're dealing with. Got the vehicle in the garage and I got some wheel chocks in front of the front wheels. I have my floor jack ready to go, or I mean my jack stand ready, rather. I also have my floor jack, but before I do all that and jack the vehicle up, I want to show you a quick little tip. If you don't have air tools and these lug nuts are on real tight, leave the vehicle on the ground with the parking brake on, and you can use the weight of the vehicle to break the lug nuts loose. That's, that's tightening. I guess I should turn them the right way, right? There you go. That's all it takes. So do that all five. Just loose them though. Okay, I got the weight of the vehicle on the floor jack and the jack stand. This is important in case you blow out a hydraulic seal in your floor jack, especially as they get older. I've already resealed this jack at least once that I can remember. Anyway, never get under a vehicle or work on a vehicle unless you're supported, supporting it by a jack stand, but I leave both there just in case. So I got the wheel off the ground, just enough so that I can rotate it and take the tire off and there's no weight on the wheel itself. So let's finish getting those lug nuts off. I'm going to go back to air tools now. With our 7 8 socket <laughs> and our trusty Ingersoll Rand air hammer, um, impact <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and our wheel is off. Now our wheel is off. Now is a great time to clean your wheel. Take it to the yard, take some soap and water, 
scrub the inside of the wheel. No one ever cleans them, and they get nasty after a while. And you can probably see this one. So you can take a sponge and clean all inside here. It'll look wonderful when you're done. And this is how you tell how much meat you have left on your brakes. So if you look right here, the space between this little clip right here in the rotor is how much pad material you have left. So there's maybe a quarter inch left here. There's still some life left on these brakes. So I could probably let these go another 10 or 15,000. Um, but I figured make a good video for you guys and why delay the inevitable, right? Don't think I mentioned that this vehicle has about 65,000 miles on it. So got some decent life out of these back brakes. Like I said, they don't last as long as they used to. Okay, so your first step here is going to remove... Uh, loosen the bolts that hold the caliper to the caliper mounting bracket right here and to do that There are gonna they're gonna be some little plastic covers on top of like a, a cylindrical rubber piece on the back of the caliper So you pop off those plastic pieces That's what they look like And once you pop those off you'll be able to stick a seven millimeter allen key back there So I realize it's kind of tight, but That's kind of where everything is. I'll get you a good shot of it that's where you want your wrench to be. So there's going to be one on top of the caliper and one on the bottom. So you got to pop those loose. Uh, I believe they're torqued to 20 foot-pounds, so they should be reasonably tight for a fastener that small. Let's pop those loose now. That wasn't that tight. Let's do the bottom one. Sorry for my fat head. Well, that one's got some clearance issues. Let's finish the top one. Now that bottom one's going to be a little tough to get to because the lower control arm is in the way, at least for my setup here. I might have to get a, a different 7mm. Maybe I'll use one of those angled ones. It doesn't have a ratchet on it. Let's see, can I get this in, on there and then get the ratchet on later? Yeah, maybe. Let's give that a shot. Yeah, that'll work. So I just put the, the seven, mil, 7 millimeter on the bottom one, then put the ratchet on afterwards. And I'm not going to get this one too loose because I'm not going to have room to get the ratchet off. So I'm going to take the ratchet off and probably go to a smaller ratchet. Got both slide pins loose. Now we want to compress the brake pad a, a bit so we can get it off of the bracket and the rotor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a big C-clamp, you can see right here. We're going to put it over the outboard pad here, trying not to break off our bleeder screw and just tighten this down. Although there's not a lot of room here. Jeez, they don't give you a lot of room here. But it doesn't take much. Now, while you're doing this, or before you do this, I'd recommend putting some towels next to the brake master cylinder under the hood. I've already done that. Reason why is because when you compress this piston right here, um, I'm sorry, when you compress this pad, that's going to Retract the piston into the caliper, and that's going to drive fluid back into the master cylinder. And you don't want that to leak out because brake fluid is not very good for paint. So I'm just going to tighten it slowly. It doesn't take much. It's actually moving very smoothly. You want that piston all the way back. I think we got it. Keep a hand on the caliper. And I think that these pads are actually wearing unevenly because I see that there's not a lot of meat left on this outboard pad, but there's quite a bit of meat left on the inboard pad. So we might have, might have had some sticking going on. So it looks like this last slide pin is not all the way out yet. Nothing's ever easy on cars, is it? Let me get that out because you guys won't be able to see anyway. Okay, both slide pins are out. And they are bone dry too. That might be part of the problem. You want to feel for any grooves or anything on, on, on the slide pins. If you feel any grooves or any type of scuffing, you want to clean these up really well. And I'll show you what kind of grease to put on these to make them slide smoother in the future. Now it's time to take the caliper off. You want to keep a hand on it at all times. You don't want to drop. And let's see how this clip comes out. It seems to be fighting me a little bit. What the heck is holding this thing in? are always all a little bit different. Get a better angle on it. Let's see what we got. 
Is there a trick to this? I know you guys like watching me kind of figure things out. So this is a good opportunity for you to do that because I'm figuring it out. Like I said, I've never worked on this vehicle before, so uh, it looks like these things have to be pried towards the front of the vehicle. And then they slide out. Just like that, it shoots across the room. Take your caliper off slowly. Do not hang it from the, the brake line. This vehicle has a sway bar very conveniently located right here to hang the caliper on. I'm going to take some wire and just tie it there more securely just so it doesn't fall. Or you could just rest it right there. Whatever you prefer. Let's take this pad out. And you see... Let's see, come on, get you in focus. Focus. There you go. So you can kind of see how much meat is left on that one. Not a whole lot, there's still some. Like I said, these brakes weren't going to fail tomorrow. But look at the inboard pad. Quite a bit more meat left on this one. So again, I suspect that those slide pins may have been preventing uh, the caliper from retracting completely. So we may have had some dragging on the outside of this rotor. And just rubbing my finger along it, I suspect that may be the case. So again, we'll fix that problem. I'm surprised it was so bone dry from the factory. Next step, you have to get the rotor off. Now, you may say, Joe, you don't really have to replace the rotor. You can always get them turned. You're right, you can. Uh, you don't have to replace the rotor. You do have to have it either machined or replaced, though. Uh, to get it machined or turned, you have to take it to a machine shop, and they have to actually t cut metal off this rotor. Uh, you could scuff it up with a you know, scotch brake pad or something and kick that can down the road, but you know what? This whole brake kit was only 150 bucks For the small amount of money it costs, in my opinion, just replace the rotor. I and mean, it's kind of silly. Rotors have become kind of a disposable item these days. Back in the day, you used to get a machine for 10, 15 bucks a side. Uh, probably cost two or three times that now, and by the time you factor that cost in, um, just get a new rotor. That's what I always do. You don't have to though, it's up to you. Again, now we have to get this bracket off. So, this is supposedly torqued on to, I believe, 89 foot-pounds. Feels like maybe a uh, 15 millimeter. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, I was dead wrong. It was an 18 millimeter. It wasn't even close. So, two 18 millimeter bolts, top and bottom. Uh, let's try it with a 3 ace ratchet. I don't think I'm going to be successful with this one, though. I do have a breaker bar with a half inch socket on here just in case. Let's do the top one first and see if we get lucky. That's moving. Okay. Bottom one, pretty easy access too. I don't know if you could fit an impact gun back here unless you get it up on a lift and hit it from behind. I'm not going to bother with that though. Okay. Now if your parking brake is still on in your vehicle, you're going to want to release it. Assuming the vehicle again is securely lifted and braced with wheel chocks like I have mine. Because if you do not take parking brake off, you will not be able to remove this rotor no matter how much you try. Okay, so here's our bracket. It appears I may still have, oh no, I don't have the parking brake on, it's just stuck on it real good. So we'll beat that with a mallet. All right, let's beat this thing and see if it comes off. Jeez, that's on there good. Uh, let's hit some this hub here with some uh, penetrating oil. Maybe that'll help. try a metal hammer since we're replacing this rotor. Another good reason to replace the rotor. Sometimes they don't come off. That's pretty loud. I'll spare you guys the noise. Okay, turns out there's an O-ring right here. I didn't see that one. Maybe that's what our problem is and maybe I just broke it. Nope. I didn't kill it too badly. Hard to imagine a little O-ring would keep a brake rotor on. Pretty good holding power. 
All right, so note that if you guys are doing this, there's an O-ring right here. Don't know why. Kind of strange. All right, so now we have our brake rotor off. Now is a good time to inspect your parking brake assembly, which is right under there. Um, normally they don't wear out unless you're doing a lot of weird stuff with your vehicle that you probably shouldn't be doing anyway. Uh, you want to look for uh, the lining thickness on the shoes. So you have a shoe right here. You have a parking brake shoe here. They look to be, they look to have tons and tons of material left. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some brake parts cleaner, not compressed air, I'm just going to douse everything and clean it off real well. You can pick this stuff up at your local auto parts store, it doesn't really matter. Get it at Walmart too, whatever your favorite store is. Just clean everything off really well. As you can see, it gets really dirty. Don't be afraid to use a whole can of brake cleaner on this job. This one's already half empty, so I'm not expecting it to last too much longer. There, it's done. Let that dry. And uh, you know what, we'll move on to cleaning up our caliper bracket. Uh, we'll load up our new pads and we'll get ready for reassembly. Okay, so on your caliper bracket, you want to look for wear along these grooves here. There really should be none, because that's what your pads slide up and down in, the, in, these, in these grooves here. So if uh, you have any uh, burrs or anything that could catch the pad in here, you know, or in here, um, that can cause the pad not to retract or not to apply. Uh, you'll have brake issues. So I'm going to take this uh, over to the garden hose and some simple green. I'm just going to hose it off with a brush and clean it up real nice. I got the caliber bracket all cleaned up or as cleaned up as it's going to get with simple green and a brush. You can see there's actually some gouging here and here. So that might be, it might have been the reason why we were having a uneven pad wear. And the other side is kind of similar, though not quite as bad. So you have a little bit right here, a little bit right here. Now, you could replace this bracket. I don't know what it costs, but I think we can save this. So I'm just going to take a file and, and dress it up a little bit. I don't want to remove a lot of material. I just want to take off any high spots. Because there is also an electroplating on here, too. And we don't want to damage that too badly. And again, the goal is not to remove a lot of material, but just to even things out a little bit. So these new pads have a fighting chance. It's, it's weird, there's no lubrication on this whatsoever. I'm kind of shocked. Because that's normally what keeps that from happening. You get the idea. Now that I've taken a little bit of material off, you can see even more pronounced those gouges. So again, I'm thinking this is still serviceable. They're not too bad. But just make sure there's no sharp edges on there where you know the pad could get hung up. Time to clean up these slide pins a bit. I'm going to clean them up with some brake cleaner, then hit them with the wire wheel and hopefully can remove some of that crud. We'll grease them up again during assembly. Hit it with the brake clean. And it's probably not going to do anything, I can tell already. Yeah, very minimal. Well, oh, maybe it's doing it okay. No comments. Yeah, this stuff's coming off. Let's clean it up a little bit more. Alright, so I got the uh, slide pins all cleaned up. So they're all shiny. Got my uh, Permatex. Oh, oh boy, it's quite a bit of a glare. Hopefully you guys can see that. There we go. Permatex Ultra Disc Brake Caliber Lube. Uh, we have our caliber bracket up here, which is also squeaky clean, or nearly. So obviously first step is to put the rotor back on. So I got one of the rotors you saw earlier. Just gonna slop it back on the lug nuts here. Like so. Pretty, huh? And we gotta put our bracket back on. So let's do that. I'm just gonna start these bolts. 
And again, these get torqued to 89 foot-pounds. So I'm just going to start them by hand. Maybe. There we go, there's one. And there's another one up top. Installation's kind of the reverse of removal. Actually, you know what? There's one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to coat this bracket with the lube before I put it on because it's a lot more difficult to do once it's on. Because you don't want to get that lube on the rotor. This is a high temperature lubricant too. So it can withstand the heat and the rigors of braking. So you saw where those grooves were before. So I'm just going to slobber this stuff on there. You don't need a lot. You just want to make sure those those pads can slide in these grooves freely. Just like so. And now you don't have to worry about getting that lube on the rotor. Wipe the excess on your shirt. Now if you do get some on the rotor, it's not tragic because we're going to clean this rotor uh, down with a uh, brake cleaner before we assemble everything. You, again, you don't want any contaminants, you don't want any of this lube, you don't want anything on the rotor except the brake pads. And inevitably you will get something on the rotor. So I just finished tightening those bolts and then we'll torque them down. Okay, I got my torque wrench set to 89 foot-pounds. I got zero room to work with in here. Jeez, a lot of foot-pounds. There we go, one. Got slightly less room here. Let's see if we can cut from the bottom. Much better. Sorry guys, I'm blocking your view. There we go. 89 foot-pounds. Now we gotta load up our caliper with pads. What you can also do is you can coat the back of these pads with this same grease just to prevent squeaking. You don't have to, but you can. Uh, you can also do the same thing with the grease that comes with the kit, but I prefer this stuff to that grease. I think it, I think this this works better, in my opinion. So I'm just going to put a light coat on the back of the pad. Doesn't take much. There we go. And this pad sits right in here, like so. The other pad snaps into the caliper. So let's coat the other pad. Make sure you get these clips too, because those things have a tendency to produce some noise. And if you guys know a product better than this Permatex stuff for keeping brakes quiet, I'm all ears. It's just what I've always used. But I'm sure there's other products out there. You take your caliper, and you snap this one in here too. Come on, there we go. Okay, so that pad is ready to go. Now, most important, you wanna grease up these slide pins. And these were bone dry from the factory. I'm very disappointed in Chrysler, or whoever may assemble these brakes. Maybe they outsourced it. Because these things were pretty dry. And these pins, go inside the caliper where they came out of and they should slide very freely. There we go. So that's that's moving a lot better now. Hopefully oh, you guys can't see it. Let me readjust you. Come on you stupid tripod. There we go. So you want this to, this slide pin to slide in and out very freely. I'm going to put a little bit more grease on there. If I can get it out again. Super slippery now. Try that off camera. There's two squirrels, man, I watch them. They just run up and down the trunk of your tree. Yep. All right, time to put the caliper back on the vehicle. 
We've got both slide pins in there loosely. Let's see if we can press this piston enough. It looks like we did. Good. So now just put those slide pins back in, tighten them down. They go to 20 foot pounds. You're doing that with your seven millimeter Allen key. Unfortunately guys, I tried my best, but I could not fit a torque wrench on the caliper slide pin bolt. So they go to 20 foot pounds. You're just going to have to wing it unless you have a cleverer setup than I do. Just don't snap one because that's not fun. That's good. These are not big fasteners, so don't go honk on them. They're only seven millimeter. There we go. We're good. Okay, then you just gotta put these little dust caps back on. Those are pretty important, because you don't want dust to get into that area back there, because that'll, that'll affect how easily this caliper slides. And you should be able to move this caliper very easily when you're done. See how easily it moves? That's how you want it to be. Um, let's put that O-ring back on the rotor. I don't know why this is here, but it was here, so we'll put it back. Or I'll try to. Does anybody know why this is here? If you do, chime in. I'm guessing it's to keep water out of the parking brake, but I'm not sure how effective that will be. Um, oh, yeah. This is something I wish they did at the factory, but they never do. Just for the love of God, put some anti-seize on your lug nuts. Doesn't take much, just a little bit. Now I should have mentioned if the hub that the brake rotor sits on, you know, the surface behind here, is all rusted. You notice that this one was not. You want to clean that rust off. Just because if there's an uneven surface there, your brake rotor won't really have a chance to run true. And you'll have a vibration in your brakes. But as you can see in the video, this one was super, super shiny, so nothing needed to be done here. There we go. So this side is done. We're going to put this wheel back on. Um, that's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to show you that. Hopefully you guys know how to do that. I'm going to do the other side off camera just because one side is just the same as the other. There's no trick to it other than what you see here. Um, there is a special procedure for bedding these brakes that comes with them somewhere. Or maybe not. You know what? Let me look for it. If I can't find it, I'll show you what the procedure is online. Uh, but essentially what you do is you take the vehicle up to 40 miles an hour and you slow down to zero miles an hour uh, over a, a course of six seconds. You drive up to 40, let the brakes cool off for a minute and you repeat that procedure. I think it's five to 10 to 15 times if I recall. But again, I'll, I'll show you that. That's it guys. There's really not much to this. Uh, brakes, brake, brake jobs are pretty easy on most vehicles. Um, some vehicles have the parking brake integrated into the brake caliper. They're a little wonky to work on. Um, but most vehicles are very straightforward. You do this procedure yourself, you could save hundreds of dollars. This, this job would probably cost, uh, I don't know, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand bucks at a dealer if I had to guess, because obviously dealer parts are expensive. This kit was 150 bucks. Oh, we got to put these clip on. Wow. You guys didn't tell me. I almost forgot this part. Here I am wrapping up the video. So this is that bracket that I sent flying across the shop before. And it just keeps the caliper in position. And this looks like it's going to be fun to get in there. Or maybe not. Not that tough. Come on. There we go. Just like that. Uh, make sure it's seated in there. Yeah, don't forget any parts, guys. Maybe you shouldn't watch me do this stuff. The heck do I know? I don't know what I'm doing. All right, now we're good. Sorry, gonna do the other side, and uh, I think that's a wrap, guys. I didn't like how the new clip was sitting on the caliper. It didn't really seat in there like the old one did. I took it apart. And I looked at it. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but those little clips that snap into those holes—they're different widths. So. The dimensions of the new bracket are physically different than the old one, so this probably isn't the best approach to reuse the old hardware, but that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I, it just doesn't fit that well. So I'm going to reinstall the factory uh, retaining clip and hope for the best. I think that's the right move here because we don't want to install hardware that's not appropriately sized.
because this one was seated in there very firmly. You remember it shot across the room and it was fairly difficult to get out too. So let's put this one back in. Oops. Yeah, that fits much better. So guys, I don't know if there's different variations in the calipers, but just be mindful that this, this, new, um, this new clip that comes with the brakes may not actually fit the caliper that you have. So pay attention to that. You don't want that coming off while you're driving. The last step before we put everything back together is just to hit the, the surface of the rotor with some brake cleaner just to take off any uh, caliper grease that may have gotten on there by mistake. And then of course any oils that may have been on there from the factory. You probably should do this before you put it on the vehicle, but it's hard to get it back. These were pretty clean though. They weren't terribly oily. All right, time to put the wheel back on. Laugh all you want, but I took this opportunity to shine up the tire too, since it was off the vehicle. It's a lot easier to do this off the vehicle than on. Lug nuts are all cleaned up. They went through the ultrasonic cleaner. Again, only because it's so much easier to do this stuff while the vehicle's apart. That's on. I don't know if you guys know that trick with the the legs and getting a tire on, but that makes it a lot easier. Well, as you get a top one and a bottom one on first, just to stabilize the wheel. I mean, if you guys are doing your own brakes, you probably know all this by now, but never hurts. You never know who knows what, right? I think you get the idea. Okay, this side's done. If you really want to get a torque wrench on these caliper bolts, um, I found a way to do it. I just put a swivel on there and just kind of straightened it out as much as I could. You don't get much of a turn. Let me make sure it's set to 20 foot pounds. It is. You don't get too many turn, too many clicks out of it, but it, it will work. Just like that. So if you're insistent on getting a torque wrench on there, not bad, not a bad idea since it is brakes and safety. Um, you can get a get access to those bolts with a just a standard swivel like that. Just about done with this side as well, and we had similar wear patterns on this side. You can see, or hopefully you can see, the outboard pad is worn a lot more than the inboard pad. Very strange. This this side was bone dry as well, no lubricant. And there were similar grooves on the, the caliper mounting bracket as there were on the other side as well, but they cleaned up just like the other side. This is basically a carbon copy of the other side. There were no surprises. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like all done and shiny, just like the other side. I reused the, uh, this retaining clip just like I did on the other side as well. This one didn't fit either, is what it is. Um, so pretty soon it's test drive time. Okay, I got both sides buttoned up, got both tires shined, both wheels clean, all the lug nuts are clean too, sent them for the ultrasonic cleaner. Everything should be good to go. Now before you go for a drive, there's something very important you have to do. Now because you compressed the caliper pistons on both sides, you got to pump the brakes. You're not going to have any brakes until you do that. So pump the brakes until the pedal gets stiff again. Okay, stiff pedal. You do not want to go driving until you do that. 
Okay, here's your pad braking procedure. As I said before, drive up to about 40 miles an hour, go from 40 to zero in about six seconds. Go back up to 40 and drive for a minute to let the brakes cool down and repeat that procedure 15 to 20 times. Okay guys, so it's the next day. I finished uh, the braking procedure for the brakes. Just drove it around for 10 or 15 minutes and wife took it around town a bit and she said it's fine, so job well done. Now I gotta figure out what to do with these brake rotors. So I could throw them out or give them to the scrap recycling guys, but I'm wondering maybe I could make some kind of a camera stand out of them because right now I'm on a, a tripod and it gets kind of in the way all the time. That might be a great base for a camera, so stay tuned, we'll see. If you like this video, please subscribe and stay safe everybody. Thanks for watching.